morning, Baggies fans. Welcome to ExpressOfStar.com. I'm here at a chilly Turf Moor alongside Albion correspondent Lewis Cox. Uh, Albion could have gone third tonight, and it started so well, or it didn't start so well because it took everyone ages to get here. But <laughs> Albion went, started well. Yeah, the match started well. Albion went ahead through Darnell Furlong, but late, late, cruel blows really. First Nathan Teller, and then Scott Twine curled in the winner late in the game. Lewis. What did you make of it? A few Albion fans have said to me outside they've got no complaints, but did Albion deserve a point tonight? I think sadly, um, it pains me a bit to say it, but I think Burnley deserved to win. Um, I think most who watched would agree, even those with you know, blue and white tinted specs. Um, yeah, but I think the manner and the context of losing it late on, you know, being ahead and then totally pegged back and left with nothing makes it really hard to take. But I don't think there can be too many arguments about Burnley winning. I think we saw a class side uh, this um, tonight. Sorry, jammed with quality and obviously the money they've spent and the head coach they've got in Vincent Company. And from what 15, 20, maybe half an hour onwards, Burnley were the better side. Albion were deep, weren't they? They're were forced to to drop deep. Um, we'll get onto that. I think I've just asked Carlos Corbran about that. I don't think you know. I don't think it's part of the game plan. I don't think it's the idea to to be capped on the edge of your own box but it, it happened you know probably partly mostly because of Burnley's quality and class and just proved too much at the end didn't it um, the equaliser I think through Teller which was about 15 minutes left he crucially was off the pitch wasn't he he came from the middle didn't he he received treatment and Corbin's just, just mentioned that actually and I think he mentioned that the pass through came from where you crucially yeah. would be so it really harmed Albion and great finish from Teller um, so harsh because Albion had Albion have defended so well, haven't they? So countless blocks, and you know, Palmer was excellent, and there were so many blocks. It felt like it might be Albion's night type thing, but that came, and then you you readjust in your thought process, aren't you? To well, I'll take this point all night. This is a great point on the road at the leaders. Yeah, it's such a shame because they haven't they're unbeaten here, so it would have been great to have that scalp. But then you're thinking we'll take the point. You had your stats ready. What was it? Burnley oh, lost home to 2015 you know in the championship. Those stats again. Yeah. I was going to say those stats are getting locked in a vault and will yeah, never... Uh, all went in the bin. Never they? appear uh, now, Just on, you mentioned Corbrand talking there. You know, you get the Twitter warriors and I've had a few comments outside. People shouting, saying, oh, too defensive and all this. But it sounds like that wasn't the way Albin set no. up. Burnley, you know, pressed high and they've got quality. Uh, someone said outside as well that you've got to remember who you're playing against. These Absolutely. are... The, the, well, they're the best team in the in the league at the moment, and they're probably going to go up. Aren't I don't they? think it's far off a Prem squad. You know, they're bringing in players from Europe consistently, and top players that stand out at this level. Plus, you got the the age-old quality of your Barnes, your J Rods, your Josh Brownells. You know, who else? Um, reliables. Yeah, exactly that experience, and then this quality of European flair. Um, loans from top levels like Teller, Southampton, Chelsea's Ian Matson at left back. Others who I can probably, you know, probably struggling to think of at the moment. You know, centre half on loan from Germany, um, keepers from Man City. So, yeah, they're, they're quality. But going back to the point about being deep and, and things like that. Sorry. Um, one interesting point, and I'm going to write it up for the website shortly from Corbin. Just thinking, we've only just finished with him, so I'm just trying to dissect what he said to me actually. But he he made an interesting point about the, the speed of Burnley um, being just better than Albion's and our, you know, speed of mind and body Albion couldn't press to handle it and, and Burnley were too good to suffer from the press and just played around it the keeper acting like a playmaker Corbrand said and just when Albion tried to get out there and tried to get up and tried to put it on Burnley they Sorry, just, just name dropping you see the four, former Albion Burnley keeper Brian Jensen at the game too Sorry, I cut you off in full No, 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 that's alright. He's still as much of a beast as he was when he played for No, no, I'm, I'm interested because he was he's goalie coach at the club I previously covered. But um yeah, Burnley were just able to bop it around, play the football they they can, and Albion just physically, the head coach said, weren't capable and up to it and able to to go again, which is no disgrace, is it? Let's be honest, and let's mention the players that aren't available. Bartley, Tom Sante, Phillips. That's three starters you could argue certainly big squad players and when you take those out of the squad you know, how how many of the squad are regular championship players at this moment maybe 13 14 and yeah the, the changes I know people have talked about the strength changes. Depth top, top, was yeah exactly Tom Rogic, to see, wasn't Tom Rogic was the first change wasn't he with 20 to go and you wouldn't re you know maybe a surprise change I don't know and I think he was involved in the equaliser I've read didn't quite see that but it highlights when you take a few out yeah, yeah, the, 
I say Albion didn't have the um, the speed, the legs to, to go and affect Burnley with without the ball. Corbran had nothing, not nothing. He had very little to look behind him and bring on to impact that. Um, a bit surprising, maybe, maybe Gardner Hickman didn't come on at all. Two legs. Um, yeah, he would have had, energy, he would have had legs, yeah. wouldn't he? And, and, and Adam Reach was a, a late, late sub, wasn't he? At one-one, I think he could have maybe come on to run, run hard a bit earlier. And Rogic isn't necessarily that player, you think? But look, that's hindsight, isn't it? Rogic is an attacking player and maybe could have created something. But so fair at one-one. Albion did have a go, didn't they? Malone just up this end had a, had a crack, didn't he? Yeah. Saved. So, you know, but and, and let's be fair, the 87th minute winner from Twine, it's a beauty free kick in the top top oh, corner, isn't it? So, yeah, uh, just a bit of a, not an eye opener, but a bit of a, like, this is the improvement Albion's made with Paul Run is incredible, and this is where they are, but yeah, this is where Burnley are. We know where the top two are in regards to the, the league table, clear of Albion, who are still six. As you say, they were third for much of tonight, but it's a lot of improvement still to go. Corbran, perhaps with this group squad he's got, especially with these injuries, can maybe only do so much. You know, the third would be phenomenal, wouldn't it? Um, obviously, teams have got games in hand now this weekend, haven't they? But um, no, you can't win them all, and you can't play good in all of them either. Um, this was tough. It, it nearly went so well, then it, it, you know Albion led for what 68 minutes, I think, from minutes seven to 75, and just a feel for the 1800 or however many away fans have travelled up here. A horrific day Traffic. of travel and conditions, wasn't it really? Um, but it was so nearly something pretty special because these haven't been beaten here. I mean, Albion nearly stopped these from scoring here, and that doesn't happen. These, you know, they score here all the time because they're so dominant in this division they've got a bit this is an easy thing to say because man because the uh, company's in charge but a bit of man city premier league yeah. vibe to what burnley Very are now doing in do, the championship yeah. it was relentless i kept tweeting i'll be in a drop i'll be in a deep i'll be in a making block after block but how can they sustain this you know surely it's not going to last i didn't want to curse it or anything but yeah, it fi finally took its toll didn't it it's such a shame um but you know it. <laughs> Things are a lot rosier than two months ago, aren't they? Yeah. So we can't bigger be, picture. Yeah, bigger picture. We can't be too disappointed and deflated about a, a narrow, late defeat here. It just maybe shows the progress made this season. And um, I just said in there to uh, to Bomber Brown and Rob Gurney actually of of uh, WM, perhaps going to back to the FA Cup, Bristol City next week. A little bit of a break from the league, bit of maybe a reset is is not a bad thing. Yeah. Just finally because the battery on this camera is going to run out because I stupidly haven't charged it properly. Um, we finished on Disappointing, bad... Disappointing, Johnny. Uh, I know. We, I'll finished, let you off. we finished on bad Matty Phillips news on Tuesday night at the Hawthorns and we're going to finish on some even worse bad Matty Phillips news. It doesn't sound great, does it? No, it's not good. We've had... Um, just that's core running there. Um, scan results. Initial scan results were this morning. Uh, well, the battery is really flashing yeah, now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Um, and and Corbrand said six to twelve weeks. It looks like on that quad muscle, so a really a really bad one. Not quite sure if it's a, a bad pull or a tear, but I think he mentioned tendon within the quad as well. But six to twelve weeks. I mean, that's you know up to three months, isn't it? Which is a big old portion of the season. And Phillips has had it had injuries bad, and you know it took time to get back from from setbacks before, hasn't he? So that's that's a massive blow. Ramifications for the transfer window. You, you would, you know, you could certainly throw that out there, couldn't you? And uh, just a, that's a real blow and a real, as well, almost as tough to take as a defeat, maybe that, because let's be fair, Phillips has been unbelievable. And what a shame to lose him, you know, what was it, 3 0 up in an FA Cup replay against National League Chesterfield? I'm sure if, you know, hindsight and all that, if uh, Carlos had his time to make those subs again, maybe he'd make it differently. But let's, let's be fair, it could have happened to any player, you know don't want to really get into that but yeah a huge blow there on two counts tonight unfortunately yeah disappointed Batch is about to go 2-1 to Burnley all your reaction expressions.com